Joining us now, a former policy analyst at the U.S. Treasury Department, Ethan Ilzetsky, is a lecturer at the London School, London School of Economics. He's also an associate of the University Center of Economic Performance, and his research focuses on fiscal policy. He joins me in the studio now. Thanks so much for coming in, Ethan. So, I mean, how much of a blow is this for deficit-cutting talk, Senator Tom Coburn's decision to leave the, the Gang of Six meetings? This, this is, uh, is an ongoing process, and uh, definitely the dysfunctionalities of the Washington, uh, of Washington's mm. uh, ability to tackle these political issues uh, has been ongoing, and uh, this is just another step in that process. Uh, process but uh, ult ultimately I think there mm. will be a way to come to agreement uh, Congress has always been able to come to an agreement at the last moment on these issues and uh, hopefully this will not be an exception so from what you're hearing from your colleagues over there and, and you know you've been tracking the story obviously very closely when when do you think we might reach an agreement you said the last minute does that mean what August well August uh, the Treasury claims now that they can uh, finance their uh, operate ongoing operations until the beginning of August uh, using all kind of uh, financial tricks uh, because they at the moment they aren't uh, allowed to borrow legally um, uh, uh, so I mean Secretary Geithner has indicated that uh, he hopes an agreement will be reached by July, uh, by mid-July. But yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure the congressional leaders will wait till the very last moment before coming to any agreement. And, and I mean, how is that going to happen when, as Senator Coburn says, they can't even agree on the basics? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think there has to be a separation between the longer term issues of the size of government on whether the deficit is tackled using taxes or expenditures and the question of the debt ceiling. But which that's is, not happening, right? Which is, uh, I, I think ultimately they're going to have to separate these because, two because questions. Because right now, raising the debt ceiling is contingent on bringing down the deficit. Uh, th that's been made contingent by the political class in Washington, but there is nothing necessarily necessarily that uh, ties the two. The debt ceiling really reflects past decisions by the U.S. government, not decisions about future policy. And so I think these two things are going to have to be delinked. And I, these are negotiating tools. I understand why congressional leaders are using these tools yeah. in negotiations. But ultimately, these two issues are going to have to be delinked. But then how will the congressional refusal to raise the debt ceiling, their linking of these two issues, ultimately impact the U.S. fiscal outlook? So I think the you know the S and P warning uh, this week is understandable. The U.S. political class uh, ha uh, is showing a lot of difficulty in coming to agreement. Um, but if we look at the uh, the S and P report, mm -hmm. really what they're warning on is on the willingness of the U.S. government to repay, not its ability. So there's no economic issue. They're warning on a political problem of the U.S. government to come to an agreement, and so this requires a political solution. Are you at all surprised by the lack of reaction in the debt markets? The S and P report. Um, I. Uh, I would have expected to see a little more, but I think the markets um, are sanguine about about this, and I think they are looking at the longer term. I think this reflects, just as I had indicated, that uh, markets don't believe that an agreement uh, can't be reached. Um, and you know, you also have to put this in the perspective of both parties, despite their disagreements, mm -hmm. putting on the table proposals to cut um, debt by over four trillion dollars. Yeah. This is an enormous commitment by both parties to. To, uh, fiscal responsibility, um, how it will be done will have to be negotiated out, but the long-term outlook is good. Yeah, I mean, you're saying that, that the, fisc the issue of fiscal responsibility should be separated from the issue of the debt ceiling, but in order to keep the debt markets on side, to maintain stability in the debt markets, do the Republicans, do many of the Republicans that, that are calling for a reduction of the deficit, do they have a point? Do these two issues need to be tackled together for the U.S. to essentially maintain financial credibility? No, I think I think the two the two issues have to be uh, entirely delinked. The debt ceiling reflects the debt stock of the U.S. Uh, government, which reflects past decisions by the government. You can't legislate changes to the past. You can only legislate about the future. So these things have to be delinked. What happened happened. What's past this past. Looking forward, we need to have a more responsible fiscal policy, and uh, hopefully Washington can come to an agreement on that.